excuse I'm a little of an allergy. <clears throat> the, uh, the situation began to develop as it did. I directed my national security team to monitor closely and report to me hour by hour. I instructed them to prepare for a range of scenarios. I also convened our key allies on a, on a Zoom call to make sure we we're all on the same page. It's critical that we're in a coordinated in our response and coordinated in what we to anticipate. We agree, they agreed with me that we had to make sure we gave Putin no excuse. Let me emphasize, we gave Putin no excuse to blame this on the West or to blame this on NATO. We made clear that we were not involved. We had nothing to do with it. This was part of a struggle within the Russian system. I also talked at length with President Zelensky of Ukraine. I'll be keeping in contact with him. I may be peaking him later today, early tomorrow morning, to make sure we continue to remain on the same page. I told him that no matter what happened in Russia, let me say it again, no matter what happened in Russia, we, the United States, would continue to support Ukraine's defense and its sovereignty and its territorial integrity. He and I agreed to follow up and stay in constant contact. I'm also in constant contact with our allies to maintain our coordination. I'll be speaking with the head of state right after this meeting today and uh, making sure we're on the same page. I didn't get a chance to speak with one head of state yesterday. We're going to keep assessing the fallout of this weekend's events and the implications for Russia and Ukraine. But it's still too early to reach a definitive conclusion about where this is going. The ultimate outcome of all this remains to be seen. But no matter what comes next, I will keep making sure that our allies and our partners are closely aligned in how we are reading and responding to the situation. It's important we stay completely coordinated. And now I'd like to turn to today's announcement, begin by asking a question. Did you lay all that cable? <laughs> She's a wonder woman. I was watching in the other room. But I didn't realize, I didn't bring along all the cable, I, you know, the empty spools. <laughs> You're incredible. Thank you. That was President Biden addressing the Look, Wagner uh, Group's recent rebellion in Russia. The president said the U.S. was prepared for a range of scenarios. Biden said he reiterated the U.S.'s support for Ukraine in its fight against the Russian Federation. And he also said that he had convened key allies to make sure that NATO was not to blame for this. For more, let's bring in ABC News' Jay O'Brien from the White House. Jay, we understand that senior congressional leaders were briefed about the ongoing situation in Russia, according to a congressional aide. What is the White House's take on everything that is going on right now? Well, Mona, this was the first time we heard from President Biden directly about that situation in Russia. Over the weekend, the White House said that the president was monitoring the situation. The White House and the president was, of course, at Camp, Dave, at Camp David over the weekend. And then, of course, he returns back today. He has this event. It's about broadband access for Americans. And he starts the event, as you just said, addressing that situation in Russia. A little of what he said is that, again, he convened top allies, had discussions with them over the weekend. But then he made the point to say that the United States, that its Western allies were not involved in any way in this situation in Russia. He goes as far as to say that this is, quote, within the Russian system. He also says he spoke with President Zelensky of Ukraine. He plans to speak with him again today, potentially, or tomorrow about this developing situation in Russia. Again, the White House keeping their eye on this. But one thing we did not hear from the president, Mona, is a label for what we saw in Russia. This situation being called a coup, but not from the president and not from top American officials. Uh, as you mentioned, the president reiterated that no matter what happens in Russia, that the U.S. support is behind Ukraine. But where does the White House go from here, Jay? Well, the question again is, how does the White House characterize what we saw in Russia? And then how do they respond if we see any fallout? The president, again, not calling this a coup. Senior administration officials not calling this a coup. There's a White House press briefing this afternoon where you can expect administration officials to be pushed on that point, among others. And then you have to wait to see what happens with Yevgeny Prigozhin. You have to wait to see what happens with the remnants of the Wagner group and how that proceeds going forward and if the administration chooses to respond. But there are one action so far, Mona, that you can take away from the president's response is A, they're monitoring this, but B, they are attempting to make clear on the world stage that the United States 
was not involved in this at all, an attempt to get out in front of Vladimir Putin, who might try to blame some of those developments on the West. The president was clear about that. Jay O'Brien from the White House, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the... Excuse, I'm a little of an allergy. <clears throat> the, uh, the situation began to develop as it did. I directed my national security team to monitor closely and report to me hour by hour. I instructed them to prepare for a range of scenarios. I also convened our key allies on a, on a Zoom call to make sure we we're all on the same page. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new posts as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.